Hello and uh, welcome to another episode of the Novice to Pro to Novice to Pro series. Uh, this is uh, episode five. In the last episode, we covered candlesticks. So, feel welcome. My name is Rupas Kamau, market analyst at FX Pesa. So, if you have any questions arising from the presentation, feel free to type them in the live chat section, and I'll be answering the questions on the go. So. <clears throat> Welcome to the session. Uh, it's an open session, so if you have any questions, uh, you can always ask. So if you're very new to this episode, you should know that it is part of a series. Uh, we are doing a 10-episode series uh, covering the journey from a beginner to a pro-level trader. So we have already covered four episodes. So if you have not covered that, then kindly go back to the FX Special channel, uh, check uh, the videos watched from the beginning, that is the introduction to trading, up to candlesticks, and then you can move on to this episode. So uh, without uh, wasting much time, I would like to begin right away. So on today's topic, we'll be focusing on chart patterns. Chart patterns are very, very important because they tend to create themselves over time. So there are various patterns that appear on your charts, that is uh, on Forex prices, uh, be it stock prices, or even commodity prices. And these patterns tend to repeat themselves over time. So they are very important because they give you a, a predictable outcome. So when it comes to, let's say, you're trading a pattern such as a triangle, then it gives you a small edge that can be very significant in making you a profitable trader. So there are various types of patterns, but I want us to focus more on understanding what they are and how they happen. And once we understand how they happen, then it will be easy analyze them and see where, where you get an edge trading these patterns. So uh, I'd like to begin right away with uh, something called a trend line. So it's something that you have already covered, but it's uh, very important that you understand how to draw these trend lines because you use the trend lines to discover these patterns. So for instance, let's say we take a very nice chart here. This is the pound USD currency pair. So you can already see the candlesticks and the way they are moving. So from the previous episode, you understand what the candlesticks are and who they represent. So we understood the four prices represented by a candlestick, the open, high, and uh, low, and close. Uh, we looked at uh, groups of candlesticks that can be two, uh, forming, let's say, a bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, and all that. But then if you take a larger number of candlesticks, uh, then you can have a much more significant price swing. And if you understand these price swings and what they represent, then it becomes easy to understand chart patterns. So first things first, uh, you can already see the swings that the market is making, uh, has been making over time. Uh, this is on the four hour chart, so it takes you all the way back. Uh, let's say we zoom out once more, you can see the overall movement of this market. So if the swings are not at all very clear to you, you can use the zigzag indicator. You can go to insert and then indicators, go to custom, and then you check uh, the zigzag indicator from here. It will give you some very nice swings that will be uh, very useful when you're drawing your trend lines. So now you can see uh, the zigzags and uh, the major market moves uh, from this uh, nice curve. So here you're able to identify the highs and the extreme uh, periodic lows in a market. So for instance, uh, you can notice that this was a significant price level. Price was going up, once it hit here, it was not uh, able to rise further, went back down and then up and down. So if you start identifying these swinging points, then they are the very uh, foundational principles to drawing your chart patterns and identifying them. So for instance, uh, if I mark this bottom here, and also I mark this other bottom here, then you can see there's an idea of a trend line moving from this point, connecting to this other low, and then this other low. And this gives you a clear direction of how these prices move. So if you are to zoom it out, then uh, perhaps you can use this support level to speculate on the next support if the pound USD continues going down. So if let's say you extend this trend line uh, this way, then uh, you can already see that we have created an understanding of what this price has been doing. So uh, clearly, the pound is on a losing streak against the US dollar. And if this continues, there's an interesting point here 
Well, yeah, let's say the market could drop all the way to the trend line. And once it gets here, uh, we may expect either of two things uh, or three things. Let's say the market does what it has been doing, bounces, like it had bounced here, bounced here, it will also bounce here. There's a chance it will do that. It would also break or even move sideways. But then you get the idea of uh, how you use this trend line to predict an action point. So notice that the price is going down once it gets to the trend line, it's an action point, changes the direction if it moves in the opposite direction. So you could have something similar happening along a trend line. So using these trend lines, uh, you do a very basic uh, principle or a very basic approach. And this is basically uh, just connecting the highs in the market with other highs and the lows with other lows. And out of that, you will be able to generate your chart patterns. So once you learn how to use a trend line, keep practicing that. Uh, try and connect the swing highs with swing highs, swing lows with swing lows, and eventually you'll be able to plot your chart patterns. So chart patterns are generally uh, movements that uh, tend to repeat themselves over time, so you are able to identify them. So let's say we take another chart here, and this is a uh, Euro USD. So I'm going back to the one hour chart, or even, uh, okay, this is good. So uh, notice that there was a period when the Euro USD was just swinging up and down, but the general price movement seemed to be uh, rectangular or sideways. So you can notice there's a common theme, the resistance around this area, and also a common theme with our support around this area. So every time the price got to this area here, there was a, a lot of efforts to push the prices back up. So every time the price gets close to the red, red line here, which is basically the support, market goes back up and keeps on going, doing the same. So on the upper side, uh, we have something similar. So market gets to this resistance, goes back down. Every time it gets here, uh, gets a lot of supply and price keeps pushing back down. So this can be identified as a period of time where the Euro USD was trading sideways or in a rectangular, uh, rectangular manner. And sometimes we describe this as a range. So the common term in trading is called a range. So if uh, you hear of ranging markets, then definitely this is what we are talking about. So sometimes the markets will have a general sideways momentum, neither going up or down. So in that case, we can describe that market as ranging. So sometimes uh, when uh, there is an indecision between the markets, uh, we say it's consolidating. So if the market is leading within a range, it's most probably under consolidation era or under consolidation phase. So <clears throat> you will notice uh, these phases or cycles happening uh, because markets are always in either of two phases or cycles. So markets will uh, sometimes be doing what you call impulse. And by impulse, it means a strong directional movement either to the upper side or to the lower side. And then once done with that, then most of the time, you will identify that the market will be consolidating. So in a consolidation, uh, most of the time, it will be a sideways momentum. And it doesn't have to be a rectangle. It can be a couple of other shapes that you identify by drawing your trend lines correctly. So as already mentioned, if you have any questions arising from the presentation, feel free to type them in the live chat and I'll be responding to them right away. So hello, Tony, and uh, welcome to the session. <clears throat> so uh, now that we understand that there are two phases, impulse and consolidation, then let's try and identify something similar. So I'll start with uh, gold. So this is the forward chart on gold. Uh, clearly, gold has been on a bearish momentum. Uh, this is uh, since last year, uh, sorry, uh, since early this year, I'm talking about February March. So this is a clear bearish momentum. So if you look at gold and how it has been moving, uh, let's use a smaller time frame. You will notice that there's uh, some times when there's a lot of action and some other times there's no action, uh, gold is just consolidating. So I'll use this as an example. So notice this particular day brought by this and this and this. It seems like the market is not doing all that much. So if you are to, uh, let's say, plot this area here, just connect this high of this day, 
with the high of this day, high and this high. And then you connect the laws, let's say from this law to this law to this law and this sequence of days. Uh, we can generally assume that for this particular period of time, uh, this is, uh, let's say, four straight days. The general movement of price or the general direction or the trend for this uh, set of days is sideways. So between this day and this day, gold was generally trending sideways. And these can be often described as a consolidation zone. So around this period, there's no much uh, activity in that particular asset. So it's moving sideways. Of course, it's oscillating. So every day, every day the market opens, there is movements up and down, but there's no general direction. So this can be classified as a consolidation phase and it can take uh, several shapes. So we have already seen the first shape on Euro USD, which is a range, which is rectangular. And now for gold, notice that this was the triangular. So sometimes we describe these as a symmetrical triangle, where there is two trend lines, one trend line representing highs that are getting lower or lower highs, the other one representing lows that are getting higher or what you call higher lows. In that case, you can describe it as a symmetrical triangle. Of course, if the trend lines do change direction, then we can have different names. But the important thing is you understand the importance of such a structure. So in most triangular structures, you will notice that the volatility in the market tends to get smaller and smaller. So if you look at this swing here, and then you compare with the next swing up, you'll notice that these swings uh, start getting smaller and smaller and smaller up until when there's a breakout. So notice there's uh, this swing here, uh, another swing here, which is also smaller. Uh, they keep on getting smaller as the volatility dies out. Even the sizes of the candlesticks can sometimes be significantly smaller as you approach the edge of the triangle or the apex. So in such a case, as the market trend, uh, trends uh, more and more towards the apex or the corner of the triangle, then the expectation for the breakout uh, goes higher and higher. Of course, uh, you never really know the direction the breakout will take. So it's something uh, of a more or less like a wait and see kind of scenario. So there are traders that try to speculate the direction of the breakout. I wouldn't advise so. So uh, possibly, if you're not very conversant with this, just plot uh, your trend lines and then wait for the market to make a breakout. Of course, sometimes you will experience what you call a fake out. Where let's say the market breaks out towards the upper side, then immediately goes back in the opposite direction. And also that's part of uh, uh, the challenges that you face if you decide to become a breakout trader and so on. So the purpose today is to understand these market structures, how they form and how you take advantage of them. So in this case, if you focus on gold, uh, immediately after the breakout, you can see the proceeding movement, a very, very strong momentum right after this, where gold continued to rise for a consequent one, two, three, four days. So for four straight days, uh, it continued trading in the direction of the breakout. So the green candlestick here represents the breakout uh, moment. So after it crosses, it's confirmed it's a breakout. Then from here, you can see price moving uh, higher for the rest of the days. So in terms of classification, as I already mentioned, uh, we can say this is a consolidation phase. And then this other one is the impulse phase. So at one moment, uh, gold is in a consolidation phase, breaks out and now gets into an impulse phase. So for most technical traders, they will be looking to take advantage of the impulse phase while avoiding being in a consolidation phase. So if you held onto the gold for four straight days, you'd probably make very little amount of money from this kind of movement. But then if, if you held onto gold for this number of days, then you probably make some significant amount of money uh, considering the difference here in terms of points uh, for that uh, set of uh, set number of days. So here there's no much movement in a consolidation, a lot of movement in impulse. So 
As a technical trader, you want to participate in an impulse by focusing on the consolidation. You want to understand when the market is under consolidation, so that when it is shifting and moving to a different phase, then you shift with that market and benefit from the movement. So technical traders will tend to group themselves into two. Uh, there is momentum traders, uh, they kind of follow the trend. And then there's contrarian traders, they kind of uh, enter very early into trends. So they, uh, they will basically be tracking trends that are coming to an end so that they can take advantage of trends moving in the opposite direction. So, now that uh, we have covered that point, that is a uh, impulse and consolidation cycles, of course, they take different shapes. So you don't have to stick with the idea of a triangle and this kind of impulse. Sometimes uh, the movement is a little bit weird, but uh, once you practice enough, you will understand when these uh, cycles happen. So let's see if you can find one that is easy to track. So this is on a very small time frame. This is the 15 minutes chart. Uh, this is the US Tech 100. So it happened a couple of days ago uh, where the market would make a very strong impulse on a day. So notice on this particular day, a very strong moment, uh, momentum. So the following day, the market is more or less like in a consolidation, just moving up and down along two trend lines, and then it eventually it breaks out. But now a new idea comes here. Immediately after the breakout, the market goes back to the breaking point. It's called a retest. It's quite normal. And then after confirming this level, pushes all the way up. So as a trader, if this is a typical day, you don't want to be participating in this market during this consolidation phase. You want to be participating during the impulse phase. So this would be the best time of the day to be participating in such a market based on this particular pattern. So notice after it gets here, forms another pattern. Uh, volatility breaks out to the lower side, moves, moves down, uh, goes all the way back up, and then down. Volatility dies out towards the end of the day. And then you can see the small, small size of candlesticks representing some level of consolidation before breaking out towards the lower side and making some very strong impulse. So there will be uh, consolidation impulse, consolidation impulse happening every now and then. So the goal is to understand them and then you track uh, these movements so that you can use them in your trading. So still checking to see if there's uh, any questions coming up. So why do you think the dollar is strong currently? A uh, good, good question. Uh, it's out of today's topic, but I'm going to respond directly. So the dollar is very strong as a result of the aggressive Fed policy. So the Federal Reserve Bank of the US is looking to aggressively hike interest rates to control inflation. This is reducing dollar supply, increasing dollar prices. So a good, good question between indices and currency pairs, which is more profitable to trade. I will be responding to that uh, as we proceed. <clears throat> so still on chart patterns, uh, when it comes to trading these patterns, there are so many. And if you study a lot of books about chart patterns, uh, there's uh, so much information around there. If you do a quick Google search, you'll see a list of uh, chart patterns that happen every now and then. Uh, among the top, top ones that you'll see includes channels. Uh, you'll see ranges, triangles, wedges, flags, double bottom, double tops, uh, triple tops, triple bottoms, cup and handle patterns head and shoulder patterns, inverted head and shoulder patterns, fake outs, uh, <clears throat> sorry, fake outs are not patterns. So in this case, I'll be demonstrating how they happen. So whenever markets are moving, uh, let's say from one point in your chart to another, the most common feature that you're going to experience, and this is out of my own experience in the markets, will be channels. So I want to do a very quick illustration here. So assuming that this is your chart and uh, there's a lot of movement on your charts, uh, most of the time you're not going to find an asset that is trading this way. So profits uh, or prices will not be moving in a straightforward manner towards the upper side or even towards the lower side. So in most cases, 
uh, what you are going to experience is that the market will make a movement upwards, another swing downwards, a swing upwards, a swing downwards, a swing upwards, a swing downward, or something similar to this. And it's up to you to make sense of such movement. So when markets are moving up, they don't normally uh, do so in a straight line. So most of the time, it will be something um, more or less like a hazard. But then if you compare the lows, they will be getting higher. And if you compare your highs, they will be getting higher. So there will be a sequence of highs that are getting higher over time and a sequence of lows that are getting higher over time. In that case, you can easily identify the direction in a market. And for instance, in this one, you can see the general direction of the market is this one. So in such a case, uh, you can see that the trend is bullish after having done some very simple analysis and identifying the swings, uh, the series of highs and lows in a market. So the default market pattern that you're going to be observing almost every other time is what you call a channel. So in a channel kind of setup, uh, the market will be forming higher highs along a trend line and higher lows. Then the two trend lines will be parallel to each other or very close to parallel. So remember, it's not on your side to force a channel. You only draw the trend lines. And if the two lines tend to be parallel, then that's when you identify that you have a channel uh, on your chart. So sometimes they'll be divergent, some getting, uh, sometimes getting away from each other and so on. So if the two trend lines are approaching each other, then that's not a channel. So if let's say uh, you're drawing your channel, the upper trend line is like this, uh, the other one is like this, and they're approaching each other, then in that case, you don't have a channel, you have a completely uh, different kind of uh, chart pattern. So in such a case, if let's say a market is going towards a trend line and then down and then up, down or something like that, then that's clearly not a channel. So the two trend lines have to be uh, significantly parallel to each other. So that's uh, going to be one of the most common chart patterns that you identify on your charts. So the other one uh, in my illustration about uh, impulse and consolidation, sometimes uh, you notice a very strong market uh, making some very strong push. And then once the uh, impulse is over, uh, you might see some form of uh, consolidation. So this consolidation can take uh, quite a while and it can take various shapes and uh, patterns. So for instance, uh, if this is your consolidation here, uh, you can always mark these uh, swings of lows and highs, then eventually uh, you will be expecting to see a breakout. So market may break out to the other side and then continue with another impulse, and then form even some uh, another crazy kind of uh, consolidation. Uh, you mark these again, and you are able to project when the market is uh, forming the next impulse. So that's uh, a basic understanding of the movements. So if we dive, uh, dive deeper, we might uh, look at how these patterns play out, uh, how they are represented, and how you interpret them. So there is a lot of theory and uh, math behind it, uh, trying to understand these patterns and cycles. So impulse consolidation is a topic that is covered by a lot of mathematicians, statisticians, and also traders, uh, and even economists. So what they're always trying to do is to understand how these patterns form so they can predict where the market is headed next. So you will notice that some uh, theories will consider those as waves. Others will use what you call Fibonacci levels uh, to try and identify the potential turning points in a market among other approaches. So for today's lesson, I just want you to understand the, uh, the structures that happen in a market. So for instance, if you look at the S&P 500, uh, this is the chart and this is how it has been performing since the beginning of the year. So on January 4th this year, uh, the S&P 500 hit a new all-time high, and this was the price here. So immediately after this, you can see how it continued going down uh, through January, went back up and then formed a low here, then went all the way up and hit a top here, and this was on the 29th of March this year. So immediately after this, uh, notice a very strong went up downwards and then up and then down, then a very strong rally that lasted weeks, 
uh, before it tested the resistance yet again. So notice how it happened here. The market forms a high on the 4th of January, another high on the 29th. Then as it approached here, this was last week, there was a very simple expectation that the market would test this area, find resistance and start moving in the opposite direction. So for a technical trader, you can be able to use these two swings, the swing here and the swing here to predict the movement of price here. So it was all about observing price as it was going up. And once price got to this area, you look for signs that uh, sellers have entered this market, and then go for your short selling trade. So in this case, if you're able to speculate and enter a short selling trade, then that trade is probably still in profit if you haven't closed that trade already. So when you are using your chart patterns, you are trying to identify a key price level. So in this key, in this case, the key price level was somewhere around the 4340 40, uh, in the S&P 500. So when you identify your key price levels, you know where to make a market entry and where not to make a market entry. So in this case, if you are just following this uh, particular channel on the US 500, it's not yet a channel uh, based on the trend line I have here. It's not uh, nowhere close, it seems to be widening. So if it, was, if it was parallel, then it would be perfect, but you take what you get. So in this case, focusing on these, you would be able to speculate on these and go for your short selling trade based on a very simple chart pattern analysis. So there are more chart patterns that you will identify and use in your trading. So let's see if you can find one more example. is one I had somewhere here. So okay, let's try and use a shorter time frame. Uh, this is the USD against the Swiss franc, and this is how it has been trading. So if you want to understand the trend, just connect your highs and you focus on the swings that the market is making so let's say we just use this uh, pull it all the way back from where it started uh, these other one seems to have started here and there you go so clearly you can understand the movement in this price by just focusing on the two trend lines so for momentum traders uh, sometimes if you're trading within a channel uh, it's a nice idea to expect uh, the trend to continue in that particular direction. So you find your value areas on the lower side. So you will realize that uh, the same same uh, set of cycles also will happen in such a market, where on one side you have uh, your impulse happening followed by a consolidation. So consolidations will tend to end on the lower trend line, and if they do so, then they present a premium opportunity go for a long trade uh, in a bullish channel. So an example, if you look at this particular day, market opens here, goes to a high of this point, but once it gets to this point, uh, notice the a lot of noise movement around here. Then if you start tracking this noise and movement around here, you notice that the highs are getting significantly uh, lower. And also if you look at the lows, let's say from this low, to this low, and then this low, they are almost taking this particular pattern. So then as a trader, if you're observing this consolidation here, then you're probably waiting for a breakout. And once your breakout happens, then the following day, you are able to identify a position. In this case, benefit right after the breakout in the direction of the pattern here. So if you understand these cycles, there's literally no need to memorize these chart patterns. So I may tell you that this is a triangle. I may tell you this is a flag, a pennant, or whatever name I describe it to be. But for a technical trader, you just need to understand that this was the impulse, a lot of consolidation, up and downs happening within this particular period. Market breaks the trend line and gives you another opportunity to go for another impulse. So in that case, you're able to put probabilities on your side. So don't take too much time trying to understand the names of the different patterns. Just identify a pattern that plays out well over time, 
then you can easily trade it in combination with other features in your trading system as we are going to cover more going forward in this series. So we will look at uh, building a trading syst uh, system, what to include in your uh, trading system. So it's not just this, you might want to add uh, another indicator that will, let's say, find the trading signals. Then once you combine them, it's one, you have a system that you can trade profitably over a period of time. So for now, it's just understanding the chart cycles. So for this one, uh, it's not very uh, creative if it starts here. So if it swings all the way down to the lower trend line, then uh, it makes more sense. So if these had accelerated all the way down to the lower trend line, then it would bring a better opportunity to go for a long trade compared to in between here. So if you're trading in a bullish channel, your value areas are always on the lower trend line. So anything that goes towards the lower trend line and shows indications of the market uh, moving in the upper direction, then in this case, it's your premium opportunity to trade in the direction of the trend. So let's see if you can identify one such trade. So I try to use the most recent prices uh, because they tend to give me more information. So uh, for the USD JPY, we have a triangular kind of formation. Market goes down and then swings up, uh, forms a high, a low, and so on. So if you combine your highs, they're getting lower, the lows are getting higher, then a breakout happened here. And remember, this was last week. So immediately after the breakouts, you can see uh, you can see the movement here, a very strong uh, breakout. So for a breakout trader who understands the triangular pattern, they would have been uh, very happy to see this kind of movement here. Uh, market breaking out, going back to test the area, and then continuing in that direction. So in this case, you can say that uh, for this particular period of time, let's say on these three days, uh, generally, the price was not going up or down, it was generally moving sideways until you had the breakout, and now it seems like the market is now pushing higher. So, still trying to look for another pattern here. Of the same. So this is USD card. Uh, this is the one hour chart. So try and go some time back. Yes. So notice the impulse that happens on this particular day. And then this is followed by a movement sideways that can be easily identified as a flag. So we always have these uh, particular patterns that we describe as flags. So you will have first the flagpole indicating a strong momentum in one direction, a consolidation sideways uh, in what now looks like a flag, then a breakout uh, to the opposite direction here. So in such a case, when you see breakout happening uh, here, then the flag can be interpreted as a reversal pattern. So when, let's say, uh, you have a flagpole and then the flag happens here, the break, uh, breakout happens to the lower side, then in this case, you can classify the flag as a bearish pattern or a reversal pattern. So some patterns can be classified as continuation, others as a <coughs> reversal, but it never really makes sense because uh, as long as the pattern is happening, uh, let's say uh, you were trading yesterday, market made this, and then this is today, let's say from the dotted line here, this is the price action for today, you never really know whether this pattern will be bullish or bearish. You never know the direction of the breakout. So it's always a wait and see kind of situation. So trying or attempting to classify these patterns as continuation or reversal uh, won't make much sense until you confirm after the price has happened. So now that uh, we have done one more example on impulse followed by consolidation, and we understand that these consolidations can take any shape, can be rectangular, triangular, can be the shape of a flag. But once you understand what you're looking for, then it's easy to uh, execute your trade. Now we will move into a much more sensible and strong idea. And this is a trend analysis. So as we proceed, uh, 
I always mention, if you have any questions, then feel free to raise those questions and I'll be responding to those questions uh, right away. So uh, good, good question. What is the difference between a trading system and a trading plan? I'll be looking at that. So is the bear array over considering today's price action across indices? I, I would think it's over. So, uh, <clears throat> all right, uh, let's do the trend analysis. And I believe this will be the last part of today's presentation. So when it comes to a trend, uh, as already mentioned, most of the time you'll identify that the trend will uh, almost always form a channel. So let's do this again. So assuming that this is your chart. So I'll try and uh, draw some sample movements. So let's say the market is trading in a channel. So it goes up, uh, makes a downswing, an upswing, or by a downswing, an upswing, and then downswing, upswing, downswing, and so on. So as a trader, you want to understand these movements so that you can identify your value areas. So if let's say your value areas on the lower trend line, then you want to buy here and expect the market to continue in that direction. Of course, a stronger trend would have these uh, trend lines in trend a little bit higher. So they might be facing this way. In that case, it would be a much uh, stronger trend. But then uh, we'll use this example for now. So, for you to have a continued bullish trend, uh, you need to see your highs getting higher. So this high should be higher than the previous one, and this than the previous one, this higher than the previous one, and such kind of continuation. The lows should be getting higher and higher over time. So when trends start to show some form of weakness, uh, you might see some stuff happening in your chart telling you that, hey, this is a uh, weakening and uh, the trend may be, may be getting outdated and we might be getting into a new trend. So some of the things to consider is if the market straight out breaks the lower trend line. This would be a red sign telling you that the market now may be changing direction. So you start seeing the market forming lower lows. So if let's say uh, this is in the momentum and the market now uh, forms another swing, goes back up, you don't expect uh, this kind of uh, continuation to happen. So perhaps you might even see the market forming a lower high, and now you start seeing signs of a new trend. So in this case, you will start seeing, let's say a low, followed by another low, and then another low. A highs uh, do something similar, maybe they start getting lower, and you have a completely new trend. So that's how you try and identify the changes in a trend. By looking at the swings and how strong they are, if there is a stronger swing towards the lower side, uh, potential weakness, and so on. So let's see how you use these uh, swings to understand the movements. So when you talk of chart patterns, let's say, uh, for instance, uh, there's a very common chart pattern. You see people calling the double drop formation. Uh, this kind of looks like this. So you might not be able to distinguish it at first, but once I tell you it's an M formation, looks like an M, then you'll always be able to capture that. So it's a scenario where the market forms two highs that are level, significantly, significantly at the same level. So in this case, the interpretation is that the market is now beginning to form uh, equal highs, and this is indicative of a weakness in the bullish trend. So if the highs are equal, then in this case, you have a double top formation. So the bottom of the M here is uh, often described as a neck point, or as a neckline. So you have your M formation and your neckline here uh, indicating the level of support. So once the market gets back to the neckline, then it's a complete pattern. And in most cases, statistically, you will realize that once a trend forms an M, uh, the trend is weak and there's a good chance the market will move in the opposite direction. So for uh, counter trend traders, they'll be looking for something like this so that they can start trading in the opposite direction of the market. Now they have seen there's a weakness in this trend and they are looking to get early 
and enter the trend in the opposite direction. So if the market now from this point onwards starts forming significantly uh, lower momentum, then they are able to capitalize on this early enough. So that's just one chart pattern that you may identify in your trading. So let's look at another kind of weakness. Sometimes uh, you may see what you call a head and shoulder pattern. So the market uh, will just move up from a new high, uh, go back to a neckline, and then up and then lower. So in a head and shoulder pattern, uh, the key points are very simple. So the market will form a head, then there will be two shoulders that are at the same level. So this high will be equal to this high, and this will be happening as the head, whereas the low uh, the low point here will be serving as your neckline. So the neckline uh, would be what we may describe as the bottom of the pattern. So indicating that the market has weakened. So some of the weaknesses that you might identify in these, as already mentioned, one, the market slightly breaks the trend line towards the lower side. So the lows could be equal, or it will be lower. So uh, it can be changing. So it doesn't have to have a flat neckline. So the other key thing to notice is on this swing, the market is unable to form a higher high. So the highs are getting higher up until the head, but once you get to the right shoulder, then you notice the high is lower than the previous one. And this is a clearly indicative for market that is now beginning to take the opposite direction. So you use that to identify the weaknesses in a trend and potentially the uh, beginning of newer trends. So let's look at one more. So having seen uh, the double top, you've seen the head and shoulder pattern. Uh, sometimes it can be even a triple top. Market goes up, uh, forms another high, and then another up, and then, then forms another high, and they seem to be on the same level. So in such a case, you might say that the market has formed a triple top, uh, a very strong wall of resistance, and if a market is unable to break that, then you start observing the lower side. So by observing the lower side, you're looking at the neckline. So if the market breaks the neckline, then the three-pole top uh, pattern is complete, and you may expect the price now to start moving in a new trend. So some of these chart patterns, they don't just tell you where to trade. Sometimes they just inform you of the trend and the health of the trend. So sometimes it's a trend that is weakening. Sometimes it's a trend that is strengthening, and you use these examples to understand how it works. So these kind of formations will be repeating themselves over time. Uh, you will see this tomorrow, you will see this next week, next month, next year, and so on. So by internalizing and understanding these concepts, then you will be able to identify a potential trade that has a good potential reward compared to the risk that you're taking in the market. So by identifying such price levels, such as a trend line, uh, the neckline, uh, or the completion of a pattern, then you're able to identify a potential point where you can make a high, <clears throat> high reward, low risk kind of trade. So let's look at one more kind of expectation that you might see. So sometimes when a trend is ending, it doesn't have to form a double top, a head and shoulder pattern. Uh, some, it doesn't even have to do anything. Remember the markets are crazy and they can always uh, do crazy stuff. So sometimes uh, you will notice at the end of a trend is characterized by a bending trend line. So instead of this uh, upper trend line uh, being significantly there and uh, being significantly followed, sometimes the trend line may change. It's still bullish. Uh, sorry. So still bullish, but now it gets weaker. So you might find that the market, yes, is still forming higher highs, but then, uh, the highs are not uh, going all the way as you're expecting in the previous channels. So this might weaken, and then once uh, weakening is over, then the market moves in the opposite direction. So sometimes when you're trying to understand the movement in the market, you are using this timeline to get informed about the strength, the health of the trend, and if there is some weaknesses, then they give you an idea of what might happen. And this uh, prepares you to look for an opportunity in the opposite direction. Remember, the more swings that appear in a trend, the lower the probability of having a winning trade in that direction. 
So for instance, in this bullish trend, if you had uh, entered a trade here, then you make some good cash on the upper side. Uh, if you entered a trade here, then you make some good cash on the upper side. And if you keep doing this, then the probability of making a winning trade gets smaller and smaller because the markets are cyclical. So at some point, uh, you'll notice that the market moves in the opposite direction. So if a trend is very strong and very well established, then perhaps it's uh, time to start thinking about the opposite trend or the movements in the opposite direction. So for instance, uh, we saw this happen with the Dow Jones, with the Nasdaq uh, the other day. So let's use the US tech. So I'll be using the forward chart. So we had a sequence of movements uh, for a couple of weeks. So notice uh, from this bottom here, the market accelerates up, consolidates for a while, accelerates, consolidates, accelerates, uh, moves back down, uh, accelerates and so on. So if you had bought here, well and good. If you bought here, probability of winning gets smaller. If you bought here, probability of winning gets smaller. If you bought here, probability of winning gets smaller. And if you bought here, then you are really messed up because the market moves in the opposite direction. So you want to be uh, capturing the trends early, not when there is, uh, they have they already been, been established and there's multiple swings. So if you're waiting for a trend such as this to form so that you can buy here, then there's a chance that you'll be buying when the trend is changing direction. So it's all about foresight, looking to understand what might happen in a trend. So from the, let's say the first, second and the third swing, then you should have some expectations and try to project how the market might play out. If you practice this enough, then you're able to identify the swings early. That's how you're able to, let's say, execute a trade here and then hold on to the trade for one, two, or even three weeks as the market continues rewarding you. So now that uh, that's mentioned, so in summary, uh, we have covered the importance, uh, why the chart patterns are important and what they give you. That's a very small edge in trading. Uh, the other thing we have looked at uh, the nature of these chart patterns. Uh, the most basic one, as I mentioned, is a channel. Uh, you will meet other impulse consolidation zones. We have seen the impulse and consolidation cycles, and we have discussed uh, the ideas behind these channels. So on the next part, that is uh, when we'll be focusing on a trading system, we will be looking at how you identify a trading opportunity based on a couple of indicators that you combine together to generate a trading idea. So this may be enough, and uh, this is uh, something that is debatable, uh, doing your analysis on a plain chart, uh, understanding the candlesticks, the price action movement, and your entry points. But then if you have more indicators that kind of refine your trading uh, signals, then the better for you to be profitable in trading. So as mentioned, if you have any questions arising from the presentation, uh, keep them coming. I'll be responding to them directly. So uh, somebody is saying they came late. I hope I'll catch up. Of course, I know you'll catch up. And if you don't catch up, then uh, there's always the, re the recording. You can always go back to the recording. Then I will watch it afresh. So. <clears throat> On the last part, and uh, I've really tried to avoid uh, having uh, you guys memorize the various chart patterns that are available in the markets because there are so many and you just can't trade all of them. Uh, there will be pennants, there will be triangles, there will be uh, all sorts of uh, chart patterns that you learn out there. But the most important thing is you understand what they represent. So when it comes to, let's say, a head and shoulder pattern, uh, the positioning is also very important. So when chart patterns happen, you want to understand where they are happening. So if they just happen anywhere on your chart, it may not make much sense. But if they happen on a particular price level, then in that case, it gets interesting because it improves your odds of winning. So let's see how we can identify uh, one of them one that optimizes your trade. So this might take a moment. 
Yes, yes, we have one. This is called a rising wedge. So a rising wedge um, is a pattern where the market is forming significantly higher highs and also higher lows, but then the two trend lines are approaching each other in what looks like a triangle. So in that case, the pattern is described as a rising wedge. It was very uh, clear on the chart of gold, one hour chart, and this is about two weeks ago. So on this particular pattern, you can see the swings, market swings to the lower side, up forms a high, a low here, and then a high, then a low, high, low, high, then eventually breaks towards the lower side. So you can see that it was a pattern that was easy to recognize. But then the important thing is about where the pattern appears on the chart. So if you take a step back and look at the four hour chart, then you will notice that gold was on a bearish momentum for quite a period of time. So if I remove these two lines, uh, just to make it clear, now you can see the swing here at top at 269. A uh, bottom here, a high here, a bottom here, a high here, a bottom here. And now the market was approaching a critical point. So when gold was moving upwards, was the upper trend line, that is the blue trend line here, then it was easy to observe the price action as it, it approached this area. So the key thing to do here uh, was to observe how gold was behaving as it approached the blue line here. So notice how the pattern shapes up. Uh, starts forming here and here, and then the market hits the trend line. So after hitting the trend line, the natural expectation is that gold will start dropping immediately. But then it stayed within the smaller pattern. So in this case, you have a smaller pattern appearing on a major price level on this trend line, and you are looking for a short trade, trade in the direction of the trend. So notice the direction of the trend here is bearish. So once the market gets to the upper trend line, you're looking for a short trade. But then, as it gets clearer, uh, you notice that uh, the rising wedge uh, keeps on playing out up until the market reverses. So the first thing you, you notice here is the pattern here. So the three candlestick pattern here is an evening star, uh, indicating a strong entry by sellers. So that would be something that you recognize right away and start uh, looking for a short trading opportunity. Then after this, there's a strong red candlestick that happens on the beginning of the week. Uh, this was Monday last week that breaks the trend line and also get to this other trend line. So this uh, would have been a very strong confirmation that sellers have this, entered this market and now price is looking to extend downwards. So the breakout out of this consolidation on this trend line was a very strong signal to go for a bearish position. So if this had happened anywhere else, then it wouldn't have presented uh, such a strong trading opportunity but in this case, you go for a short trading position, perhaps even targeting lower prices. On the other hand, your stop loss just goes above the pattern. So in this case, uh, the positioning of the pattern was very, very important, especially for gold traders. So when a chart pattern happens, uh, it's very important to understand where it happens because it can present a critical trading opportunity. So let's see if you can find one more example. So sometimes uh, the patterns are not perfect. Uh, for instance, uh, look at Audi USD. So the Australian dollar strengthening uh, very well against the US dollar. So some good, good uh, momentum here is the impulse uh, followed by the consolidation here, impulse, and then another consolidation. So sometimes when you're trying to map your prices, you just connect your high, the next high, and then the next high like that. So notice uh, what was happening here. Uh, the market forms a low, followed by another low, and now it seems like this is what we have. So eventually, when the market breaks out here, you can see the proceeding movement downwards uh, for a sequence of days. So these patterns, uh, they are not something that uh, you can expect that uh, I'll be having this kind of pattern. So you basically just observe the price and what it represents. So for instance, notice this one. So you just track it, uh, trying to understand uh, the kind of momentum the price is making, patiently waiting for the moment of breakout. 
So notice here that immediately after the breakout, uh, price made a very strong impulse towards the upper side. So as a technical trader, you spend most of your time drawing your trend lines. Uh, sometimes you may have to remove all your trend lines and then redraw them again, to remove what we call accumulated bias. So whenever you have your chart patterns uh, drawn very well, sometimes you may accumulate some bias and you want to shed that off, uh, remove all that, and then have a clearer perspective. So sometimes you just clean your charts and then you draw the trend lines again, and then you have a clearer and more direct understanding of what's happening. So notice after the movement, uh, sideways momentum, and then another breakout and so on. So these patterns will always be there. You just have to understand how to trade them. So any questions regarding to the chart patterns before we close? So a good, good question, on which time frame are you using to identify these patterns? So the way we have designed the series, that is the novice to pro series, is to serve all kind of traders, that is uh, from shorter term trader, uh, let's say a person who trades in the one minute chart, five minute chart, and also a longer term trader, person who is doing hold on their trades for a day, a couple of weeks, or even months. So it's designed to serve all kinds of traders. So in my selection of charts, sometimes you see me doing 15 minutes, uh, one hour, or even four hours. So um, the analysis applies the same way for different time frames. Of course, if you are analyzing on a higher time frame, then you're probably looking for a trade that you might want to hold longer. Uh, if you are analyzing on a shorter time frame, then you want to hold on to your trade for a smaller duration of time. So uh, for instance, uh, let's try something smaller. Uh, this is the USD card uh, 15 minutes chart. So a quick one for everyone. I uh, hope you can respond on the charts. So this is the price action today. So how do you classify this price? Do you say that we are in a consolidation phase or are we in an impulse phase? Is USD card on consolidation or on impulse? So what's the difference between smart money concept and price action? Uh, good, good question. Uh, which period is the best in trading for a beginner? Is it one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, one hour? Uh, how do you get to know if you'll get uh, on rules or profit? Uh, you never know whether you're going to uh, get a profit or a loss in a trade. That's why you take a risk. So yes, uh, I'm getting some good, good responses from Tony, Brian, uh, Godfrey. It's an uh, impulse. Uh, this is good. This is good. So if you are trading on the 15 minutes chart, you don't want to be participating in a market that is on impulse. So you don't want to buy here. You don't want to sell. You, you don't want anything to do with such a market. You want to track a market that is consolidating so that you can trade it on the break. So uh, right now, because it's the New York session, so most of the assets are under impulse. So if you look at the 15 minutes chart on most uh, of these charts, you will notice that they are act actively on the move. So if a chart is on the move, uh, that's not the right movement go for a trade. So you want uh, when the market is sideways uh, or consolidating so that you can execute your trade on the break. So if you are a shorter term trader, the analysis is the same. You will be able to identify the impulse versus the consolidation and find the right kind uh, of trade for yourself. So still on the questions, uh, one, um, which period is, uh, is best uh, for a beginner? Uh, there is no best period. Uh, we have demo accounts available under FX Pesa. So once you register for an account, uh, make sure that you have multiple. You can have two or three accounts. Uh, treat them differ differently. You are trying to identify yourself. You are, it's something that you have never done before, so you are trying to understand who you are or where you fit in. So in this case, uh, a moment, lose my power. Uh, 
Oh, sorry for that. So, as I was saying, you need to have uh, two or three accounts. Uh, for one account, try long term trades, trades that you hold uh, for a week or a couple of days. Uh, for another one, you can try day trading, uh, trades that you open and close within the same day. Then uh, for the other one, you can do uh, quick trades. Uh, within a short period of time, you can do five minutes, uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes trades. And then you try and compare notes, see what you're good at. So if you are more patient and you prefer a longer term approach to trading, then you will identify where you fit best. So yeah, that's the purpose of the demo account. It helps you gain perspective of uh, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. For instance, if you have a job, uh, let's say you're working somewhere full time and you don't have a lot of time uh, to keep executing and managing your trades, then you have no business doing five, 10 minutes trades. You probably are looking for a way to analyze the market and then execute a position that you manage, let's say at the end of the day in the evenings, and then you manage that trade over a couple of days. So uh, there is uh, approaches for everyone. It's upon you to identify which one works best for you. So how do you know uh, that a market uh, will increase or decrease? So these are good question. Uh, you never know that whether the market will go up or down. So the purpose of these analyses, trying to identify your chart patterns, is that uh, you improve your odds. So you're trying to understand what's happening in a certain market. Uh, you're trying to understand whether the market is under impulse or consolidation. So if it shows you that the, the direction is down, uh, let's say after a breakout, then in that case, you're able to execute a trade uh, with a strong conviction that there is a high probability the market will move in this direction compared to that other direction. So an example uh, we have seen with the US Tech 100, uh, we have this particular pattern here, uh, more or less like a channel, market moving up and down and up and down and up and down. And then somewhere towards the end of last week, uh, you can see the series of candlesticks that lead to the breakout point here. So as the market was going back down here, it broke towards the lower side. So my trend line was broken, giving me an indication that there is a good chance the market will continue in this direction compared to moving in the upper direction. So in this case, it was an idea that the market is now going down compared to up. Of course, the market could change direction any time, but then the odds are on my side that the market could go down. So of course, the market could get here and then immediately move in the opposite direction. But then if you find similar kind of uh, chart patterns and you trade them the same exact way, if you do 100 trades, then you're guaranteed to have more winning trades compared to losing trades. And that's the beauty about winning patterns in that the outcomes on such patterns can be something that you can base your trading strategy on because they tend to repeat themselves over time. So whenever you have a channel like this and the market breaks the lower side, if you trade towards the lower direction, you have a higher chance of winning compared to a person who is trading towards the upper direction. So the only way you achieve that winning edge is by repeating the pattern across a large number of times. So if you trade it once and the market doesn't play as expected, you should not uh, get angry or lose faith in your system. You should always understand that the probability that something doesn't happen sometimes happens. So every time the market, let's say, breaks the lower trend line and you're looking for a trade in the opposite direction, it will not always happen like this. But then if you trade it a large, num a large enough number of times, then you get a winning edge. In that case, you get profitable in the long run. So I'm afraid uh, my time has run out, so I'll have to end the episode today. So on the next uh, presentation, we'll be focusing on a trading system. So uh, building onto these points, we have done candlesticks, uh, we have done the chart patterns. And now we're looking at the trading idea, we're looking at the risk management side, where you execute your trades, where you set your stop loss, where you set your uh, take profit, uh, the kind of indicators to add on your charts, uh, how to combine it all together in order create a profitable system.
So in the last question, how do you place stop loss and take profit while trading a breakout? So I will be covering this uh, with more focus on the risk management. And once we do that, then I'm, I'm hoping that the series uh, will be one package that helps you transition quick from a beginner to a <coughs> profitable trader. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you for your time. I hope to see you guys on the next session.